Hello, I'm your host, Grayson Brulte. Welcome to another episode of SAE Tomorrow Today, a show about emerging technology and trends in mobility with leaders and innovators who make it all happen. On today's episode, we're absolutely honored to be joined by Daniel von Neuenhova, president of Sony Depth Sensing Solutions. We'll discuss Sony's depth sensing technology and the impact it has on automotive safety. We hope you enjoy this episode. Daniel, welcome to the podcast. Hey, good afternoon, uh, Grayson. Welcome. Uh, excited to have you here because depth sensing has immense capabilities, immense use cases throughout a variety of industries. It's not just one industry. The technology carries across a, a variety of industries. And Daniel, to kick things off, let's dive right into this. What is depth sensing and how would you describe it to a listener? Depth sensing, what, what few people realize is that cameras we have all around us, they're just recording color in two dimensions and they don't contain the depth. So depth sensing actually means that you also include the di recording the distance to all the points in the image. And that's quite crucial actually, uh, because as, uh, as we all know, we live in a three dimensional no uh, world. And in order to understand, in order to understand our um, environment properly, uh, especially for machines, this third dimension is very, very crucial. As humans, we tend to recognize things in uh, color pictures, uh, but the, the depth is not actually uh, present in those pictures. You've described depth sensing as a game-changing technology. Is that because of the distance in the image, or, or why do you describe it that way? Well, game-changing means that it's really revolutionizing quite a few industries. Actually, as I just mentioned, this uh, depth is really crucial for machines. In order to enable machines to properly understand their environment, they need these three uh, dimensions. And basically, there are a lot of applications that are trying to run off color images. If you take, for example, face recognition, it's running off color images as well in many mobile phones today. However, if you just show it a picture of yourself, the face ID also recognizes you. So somebody carrying your picture could log in to all your details as soon as you add depth uh, you need to also have the exact uh, representation of, of the geometry of your face. And that's like a, like a fingerprint. It's really unique to every human being. So this is an example where, where depth allows a machine to really know it's you. And uh, color just allows a machine to think it's you. What you described there seems that depth sensing could increase security for, for biometrics. If you're an ATM machine, for example, or you're trying to unlock a vehicle. Is that, is that a fair statement there? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There are some mobile phones today which already use some of the of the depth perception in order to bring this at a level of robustness. And, and the advantage of those is that they can be used for unlocking your financial data and these kind of things, which makes wiring some money very rapidly from your phone and these things very, very handy. So in that respect, we can also see that this uh, is a natural step to also be included in ATMs, in airports, in all these kind of things. And that's then just the biometrics angle to it, uh, because that's just uh, the tip of the iceberg, if you want. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a game-changing technology. It's also things like autonomous navigation of both robots, cars, drones. It's also things like uh, 3D scanning your environment for augmented reality. It's also things like monitoring and understanding properly uh, the, the traffic info or the amount of humans or whatever uh, you want monitored properly. All these things can be observed properly if the, if the machine uh, possesses some, some 3D perception instead of just color perception. Well, that, that's game changing. You're, you're increasing security. You're allowing the autonomous vehicle to drive better. You're allowing the augmented reality world to be, mit, to be made. Let's dive into to, to the automotive industry here. You described the example with the pedestrians. What are some other applications that depth sensing can be used for in the automotive industry? Yeah, auto automotive these days is a, is a huge category where lots of things are changing. And, and one of the evolutions uh, we see coming is, is the autonomous driving um, evolution, which is a huge challenge in the sense that uh, when cars try to start taking control of the steering wheel, you want to be absolutely sure that you don't hit any, uh, any pedestrian or any object uh, that can damage your car. So in that respect, uh, having some 3D perception is not just an option, it's, it's mandatory and can either do that by multiple viewpoints. Uh, if you have multiple RGB viewpoints, you can see the depth from those. The downside of those is that in darkness, they're quite blinded because they need light to see that. And that's where, where there are depth other depth technologies like 
radar or um, active light based tap technologies or even sonar that allow you like your ultrasonics that allow you to 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 be combined in a full 3d view of the surrounding of the car and that's autonomous driving besides that there's also evolutions or revolutions going to happen inside uh, the cabin uh, some of which are already on the way some of which will still follow so there's quite a lot of happening in automotive indeed there's a lot happening. We're, we're seeing the improvements in, in ADAS. Pretty much every vehicle new today has uh, emergency braking, has lane keep assist, pretty much as, as standard features today. Is Sony's depth testing technology currently being used in, in vehicles on the road today? Oh, Sony is providing a lot of a lot of sensors and there are definitely vehicles today ben- benefiting from that. So Yes, the, uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, unfortunately, I can't give you uh, the details of, of which brands or, or which cars are really using that. Uh, but yes, there are uh, quite a few cars on the road today using some, some sensing of some form uh, that uh, is coming from Sony. You described earlier, let's say, the, the security applications where you're making that consumer's bank account safer through the depth sensing. And when everybody gets into a vehicle, if you're at home and your wife takes your child to school or go to the grocery store, you hope and pray they get to the store and home safely without all the advancements being made today with the emergency braking, as I said, the, the lane keep assist. What are the impacts that depth sensing could add to safety? Can depth sensing and technology developing increase safety? So you're like, oh, I know that they're gonna, the vehicle is going to, the emergency systems will kick in because there's depth sensing there. Well, it definitely, it's all about increasing the, uh, uh, the robustness of these systems, right? So, of course, the ultimate is, is just being um, completely confident in any situation, any environment that the car will fully control and take care of everything. In reality, this will happen in steps. We're, we're definitely getting there and, and a lot of sensing and sensors will be necessary for that, including depth sensing, but also other, other modalities. Um, uh, in combination with that, uh, regular color sensors, um, etc. But the steps to go there, some very important steps to go there are, are that initially we, are, we know ADAS today where we're getting systems that assist us in, in driving the lane control, etc. You mentioned that. So the step, now these systems uh, need to monitor as well some way or the other that you keep your hands on the steering wheel, that there is a certain uh, level of control from the driver. The next step in that will be to allow the driver to really release the steering wheel and, and give the autonomy to the car and have the car take liability of the driving. And this is a, a significant step. And initially, that step will be taken by still having some uh, observation of the driver so that the driver can take over uh, the steering whenever the car feels it's not fully understanding or not fully 1000% confident that it's driving safely. So. In that respect, the in-between step between just enjoying an autonomous ride uh, and sleeping in the back of the car and uh, what we have today will be that you can leave the steering to the car, let the car drive, but you still will be requested to keep some attention and be ready to take over when things um, uh, don't really, when the car is not perfectly sure about what it's doing. And in order to in order to get to that level, the car needs to have as much senses and as much understanding of the 3D, envi- 3D environment to, uh, as possible, because that is what enables the car to be as confident, I mean, to be fully confident. And yes, I will only enjoy those services if there are some 3D capabilities uh, given to the car to, to take care of that functionality. It's not just taking care of you, making it safe for you, it's making it safer for other individuals on the road who perhaps are driving and they want to know that your system is, is monitoring you to take care of you to make sure that you're not misbehaving or, or doing something silly. Well, you have individuals that do silly things in vehicles. We've all seen the videos on, on YouTube of silly things. But perhaps there's a driver that's distracted and keeps talking to the passenger, turning their head or turning around telling the kids to be quiet because they're on a call. Can your depth sensing technology do that? Say, wait a second. This driver's not paying attention. They're, they're, they're telling the kids to be quiet, talking to the passenger. Can you notice that? And then the system goes perhaps beep, 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 driver, please pay attention or system will disengage. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you, you got it fully right there, Grayson. This is, this is a very important field, especially as I explained that you will be required in certain situations to be able to take over the steering wheel. So all car manufacturers will need to 
uh, install some mechanisms to, to fully monitor exactly those situations so that no unnecessary accidents happen when, when drivers get used to not driving and all of a sudden aren't ready to take over. So uh, features like head orientation, the attention of, of, of the driver where he's looking, all these, all these angles and aspects are, are being taken care of by 3D systems in, in your future cars. Adding to that, a big thing in cars already today is uh, what we call drowsiness detection. That's already a feature which is in some cars today, but it, it illustrates the way it's implemented in most everyday cars today is, is, is quite uh, low level and it's not very accurate. So this is a good example of a system that can, can uh, be much, much made much, much, much better uh, by bringing in some 3D, by bringing in multiple modalities and multiple sensors so that you can know 100% sure when a driver is distracted or when he's drowsy or when things are not really as they should be. And indeed, you will get an annoying beep, beep, beep at those <laughs> in those situations. When you monitor the, the, the drowsiness of the tire, the drivers putting their head backwards and forwards, they're, they're half awake, half asleep, they're opening the window trying to get cold air to wake up. Is that where the, the depth technology comes in? Wait a second. This head is moving in a, in a pattern that we've determined that could mean drowsiness. Is that an example of how the, the depth sensing technology could be used? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So the, the depth technology will, will, do, will know down to the last detail, all your movements in three dimensions, uh, what you're doing, the speed of, of, uh, of, of your head orientations, how attent I attentive you are. Also, your gaze is being, will be tracked and is already being tracked in, in many cars today. So all this, this big library of, of data points together with, with uh, some good compute power will enable the, the car to fully understand whether or not things are, what the state is of the driver. Also, maybe adding to that, if we talk about state of the driver, also the, some, also the happiness, the, 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 the attitude or, or how the driver is feeling will be monitored because eventually we want a tailor-made experience in a car. We want a car to, to be an extension of, 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 of us as humans. It's, it's taking us somewhere and, it, it's, and, and whilst going there, we want to maximize the quality of our time. So all this is, is being looked at in, um, uh, with sensing technologies. When you look at the sensing technologies, I have a vehicle that has sensing technology in it, and it always beeps at me and tells me to move my steering wheel because the steering wheel is blocking where it's put, and I'm just a consumer. Okay, you didn't put this in the right way. It's obviously, it makes a, a big difference. Do you have best practices of, of where the sensors should be put so the depth sensing will work the best? Or do you work with your OEM partners to determine we, we recommend putting the technology here to get the full benefit of it? Mm. Yeah, a lot, a lot of it is co-creation, of course, because in the value chain, there are a lot of different players and, and uh, we're typically providing the, the sensing part and some of the software. So in that context, this is... This is uh, uh, many aspects of it, it's collaboration. Now, there is also uh, a lot of joint investigation, joint research going on to see where these cameras need to be positioned in order to maximize their efficiency, their use, their quality, and minimize the cost for the, uh, for the consumer in the end, because you don't want to have uh, cameras everywhere, because that would make sense. So typically in the center, in the center of the car, behind the steering wheel, uh, outside of the car, it's more front rear, but also on the surrounding, uh, there are, there are, there is always a level of, of, uh, sensing necessary. So I would say quite the obvious positions, but, uh, the effort is to minimize, uh, the amount of cameras and to maximize the efficiency of the, of the cameras, uh, and what they can achieve in the car. That's the trend. The cameras can achieve a lot. I, I spoke to an Uber driver recently that has an electric vehicle with a lot of cameras on it. And this individual said, how do you love it? He said, I love it. I said, sir, why do you like it so much? He goes, now when I go through an intersection, I'm taking an unprotected left-hand turn. I can see all the camera data in case somebody decides to be silly and run the light or run into it. It makes me a safer driver being able to get all those cameras. That's just one example that I've personally experienced. We are talking to an individual with, with the cameras there for the safety perspective. Sony is, is all in on safety. Your, the, your depth sensing technology is part of Sony's safety cocoon. I repeat, Sony's safety cocoon. It's really a fascinating approach that's been well documented throughout uh, Sony's YouTube videos. Could you talk about that approach to safety, please? First, we should distinguish in the ranges around the car. There are multiple ranges around the car that need to be safeguarded. So 
there is the, the what we call the short range around the car, which is the, the perimeter of, uh, of around 10 to 15 meter around the car, which especially in, in, um, in a context close to your home, uh, where there are many, where there are a lot of humans like parking lots and these, and these kind of situations, there is a strong need, even at slow driving, to be 1000% sure that you're not missing the, even the slightest detail. So that's the that's the, the the closest context around the car. Then you have the more longer range technologies as well, and if, as, and of course everything in between that. But long range typically means on the front of the car, lidar technology is looking around 100, 150 meters far for when you are uh, mostly for highway driving, because there you really need to look uh, far ahead of the car, be able to monitor the the radar the radar technologies give a complement to that, and then there is multiple mixes of modalities that are used by various OEMs in order to to bring about what they believe is the best strategy to to bring safety there. And 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 as Sony, we're trying to provide the highest quality of of all these modalities to the market. So. But on this long range in, in the front, there are already deployed technologies like auto, automatic cruise control or adaptive cruise control. These are existing today, but of course, uh, when making lane changes, when making, uh, when taking um, uh, exits and these kind of things, uh, you, you always need to have a mix and a proper understanding of, of everything going on uh, on the highway. An extra angle to this is that there are also different technologies. There are 3D technologies that are blinded by uh, things like mist or, or uh, things like fog and, and rain, etc. There are technologies that can see through those. Uh, so those are, are partially under investigation, partially also being worked out. Uh, that's part of the, um, of the, of the, of the safety um, aspect we need, uh, we need, we want to deploy in the car as well. That was in front of the car, in the rear of the car, um, for many years, there is a regular uh, color rear view camera, but of course, the more you can secure by, by 3D technologies and others, what the car understands of its environment, the more the car gets uh, safer. There are maybe a category which is in between long range, you have the, the short range, there is the, the middle category as well, uh, which is obviously then used in between uh, both, both those situations. Uh, not much I can say about that, but there are those are uh, uh, definitely there as well. That's more of 40, 50 meter category, which is typically also taken uh, full 360 uh, around the car today. You mentioned the environment. You have the, the the safety cocoon, which is making the car safe to operate, safe to drive, or eventually safe and autonomous. And then the other aspect of the environment is inside the vehicle. When the consumers are inside the vehicle, they want to have a great experience. They want things to work. You wave your hand to open the sunroof. You want it to work. You ask the car to to change the music or, or raise the volume. You want it to work. Inside the vehicle, how is Sony's depth sensing technology being used outside of safety? Are there consumer comforts that it's being used for? As described with opening and closing the sunroof, or perhaps if you're in front of the screen and you want to you want to go left to right to to change tracks. How is it being used inside the vehicle? Yeah, good question. Actually, uh, inside a vehicle, as I mentioned earlier, there is this focus on, on making the experience as nice and as good and as high quality as possible. So inside the vehicle, there are already today many, many comfort features. And, and uh, the first focus of, of depth technologies as well is to further enable those comfort features. You can give examples like everybody knows when, when, when there are now fixed, uh, you can now save your configuration of your electrical seating in the car so that it fits automatically to, to so that the mirrors and everything is configured properly now. Uh, with the depth technology, this, this even fixing it automatically and configure it for you is a, is a redundant step because the 3D technology can even understand, can understand immediately what should be the most uh, accurate position for the mirrors, etc. Uh, for you, there is the, the facial recognition that can enable to launch that configuration automatically where now sometimes it's Bluetooth, sometimes uh, there are systems which are not always handy or which you have to train or manually configure. Uh, when you save your face in in one of the future cars, it will automatically be aware uh, that it's you and 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 be able to configure all these things automatically. And we also uh, tend to look at a car as a as a multimedia device. So a car is um, we all remember the evolution from a from a feature phone or 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 an old regular phone to a smartphone. And in the beginning, it felt a bit awkward to to have all these internet enabled things. Uh, on your phone, but rapidly we adopted that and it made total sense. And, and we have a similar vision for a car, actually. Uh, we believe a car should be 
multimedia enabled. And, and in that context, you can think about face recognition, for example, doing a payment in the car, customizing your favorite movies, music, um, and all those things. There are many, many more things that, that we see in the context of comfort. Maybe the last one I can mention is uh, a technology like gesture control, which is, has been a very challenging technology to deploy uh, uh, up to a couple of years because it requires a lot of robustness and, and differentiating so that there are minimal false positives and that the, uh, the, the, the system really operates securely. But make it, enabling it with 3D in the proper context is really a very, very easy and intuitive interface. And it allows you to look, to keep your eyes on the road while controlling all these new features in the car, while switching music or launching, launching uh, several other, uh, maybe a video call or, or other things that you will be doing whilst driving uh, in your next generation car. I love the fact that you get into the vehicle, the seat sets its position, the mirror set its their position. You're creating the bespoke experience. You, you're giving the several row suit a vehicle. You're going there to get a beautiful bespoke suit made that, that, that fits you. And you're doing that for the vehicle. You mentioned payments. I think in-car payments is going to be a giant growth market and society shifts to autonomous vehicles. Could depth sensing technology be used to authenticate a passenger? So it says, okay, Daniel, okay, Grayson. So all my metrics, I like the seat warm. It has my credit card on file and said, okay, car, continue ride and it charges my car. Or I say, okay, car, turn on radio. Does that become that authenticating thing so somebody can't put a mask on and say, oogly boogly, and then next thing you know, they're charging all the stuff to my credit card? <laughs> well, init initially, obviously, uh, th there's going to be a, a level of evolution here, and this is, this is a roadmap being built by humanity, I would say, because even if we look at all the, all the car brands, they're, they're just going to deploy technologies and implement elements and then, and then see how we as, as the human race will respond to that and what we appreciate and what we don't. Now, definitely the things you mentioned, um, uh, they are part of what is possible and, and what, is, what is considered. Now, how much and in what mix and in what shape these all will be deployed, that's, that's uh, dependent on many factors uh, and, and, and that will really de uh, de define the rollout uh, of these things. So, I wouldn't say that all of a sudden tomorrow you're going to be, you're going to have theft protection or you're going to have in all the cars or in many cars, or you're going to have recognition of all your passengers. Or, I mean, that's, there is the, the, all these things are possible, but things are going uh, in a natural evolution. Possible is good. You have really smart engineers like yourself and the, and the great team at Sony that engineer and build some of the world's greatest products. So I'm not going to give a timeline to it, but at some point you're probably going to figure it out and, and deploy it through uh, the, your customers into the vehicles outside of the vehicles are there applications for for depth sensing in the home I mean, sony makes great tvs is, is uh, you have a lot of products in individuals homes are there applications for depth sensing there oh absolutely uh <laughs> there are as i mentioned uh, the opportunities in depth for depth sensing are, are are really uh i mean there are a lot of things depth sensing can enable and obviously, that's also inside a home. Uh, I mean, it's obviously nice that your that your face is properly recognized. Uh, one of the things I'm thinking of is is the fact that every day's alarm systems you forget the code or you miss a digit, and the, and you hear uh, in the middle of the night uh, you you have this neighboring uh, alarm system running, etc. He came home and and missed a digit or whatever, and 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 the whole neighborhood is awake. So. This happens way too often. So just just having robust recognition systems and, and sensing systems makes it all the all the more easier. It's it's just gonna the code's gonna just be a backup or or not even be necessary. Uh, also, access control of your home. Uh, you arrive and and if you have a robust if you have robust face ID, robust recognition, these things are just making your home safe. If somebody is running through your home while you're absent and the face is not recognized, there are also multiple gradations you can do. You can you can allow that. For example, your parents you're on a holiday and your parents in law are are checking on giving the the plants some water while you're absent, etc. You don't want your alarm system to go, but maybe you want maybe you want some 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 response stating, look, there is a there is a female uh, person which is not recognized by the system in your home right now, and then you can decide yourself uh, what you'll be doing. This is again just tailor it, tailoring it on, on 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 the face recognition. Other things like gesture recognition can definitely have a 
have a position in the home. Autonomous AGVs are already in your home. Uh, most of us uh, have today these robot vacuum cleaners, etc. They're, they're just on the way to become much, much smarter uh, so that they can easily... They, the problem with those is that they, they, they suck things they shouldn't or they, uh, they, they get stuck somewhere. And these, these things can be avoided uh, by, by improving their uh, sensing systems. So that's a couple of examples. Other things are the multimedia systems um, can, can understand better. So some examples I've heard uh, that were also interesting uh, was uh, even for very expensive uh, rental uh, systems where, where very new movies are rented, you could have, you could have systems that uh, count how many people are watching the movie. <laughs> so I've, I've heard many different things. Uh, it goes from monitoring to, to comfort to... Um, uh, to enabling uh, uh, robots to navigate drones flying around your house, taking pictures of, of people uh, in the house from time to time. Uh, so you keep a library of what's happening in your home. I mean, who knows? The safety and the security to me seems is a critical use case that can create a lot of value from an economic standpoint. Insurers are going to love it because it's going to limit the amount of checks that they have to write. Going back to automotive, where I live, we have a phenomenon now where individuals leave their keys in the car all the time and cars get stolen every day, every day. This gentleman I know had his Ferrari stolen yesterday because he left his, it was a 488, left his keys in it and the Ferrari was gone. But if it had your depth sensing technology, said, oh, you're, you're not Bob. You can't take the car. Okay, you're going to help the insurer. So there's a, a lot of stuff around there, around the safety and security I really like. The technology is evolving in a very positive way. There's a lot of use cases we described today. You're sitting here as the president of Sony Depth Sensing Solutions. You're an engineer building really great technology. How do you see depth sensing technology advancing over the next decade? If you look at depth sensing technologies today, there, are, there is, as, as you mentioned at the very beginning, that there are a lot of different technologies trying to bring depth one way or the other to, uh, to machines. I, I went over some of those like passive stereo uh, um, is great, but it doesn't work in the dark. Uh, Ultrasonic is very nice, but it doesn't give you a good resolution. Uh, similarly, uh, for radar, radar can can really uh, is very robust in certain ways, but doesn't really give you a resolution or, or makes it difficult to understand where where the signal is actually exactly coming from and 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 these kind of things. So all these technologies have their limitations. You have the what they call time of flight, uh, which is um, uh, active light based light radars if you want eh? they called lidar flash lidar but you also have they also called time of flight you have multiple flavors of those and essentially the reason you have all those is that the ultimate depth technology hasn't yet been conceived right now so what are some of the limitations some of them have issues as i mentioned with resolution and and understanding um, the granularity in the scene where things of, are coming from some of the higher resolutions ones uh, like time of flight they have difficulties with longer ranges or with power consumption because they have their own light source but of, obviously when you want to see very far that light source will need um, to have to to consume a bit of power or there is issues when multiple of these systems look at the same environment can I can imagine that two cars look ahead of them and they both use active light or uh, active technologies emitting certain signals in front of them, then there must be absolute certainty that they don't interfere. So it's in this, in this kind of context that there is a lot of improvement being made. So making a very a long range, low power, fully robust to any circumstance, a uh, high resolution uh, depth system is uh, what the roadmap is heading towards. And, and that, as, as we discussed, uh, will fully enable the game-changing uh, aspect of, of depth in the context of uh, all these applications. As devices get smarter, everything's going to come into low power is going to be a huge trend for this decade. How can you build the world's best device running on low power? Speaking of that, what's the future of Sony depth sensing solutions? The future of Sony depth sensing solutions. First, well, many of the things we talked about, we wanna we wanna enable the industry to to see, to have them see the daylight. So, at Sony, we have this huge portfolio of of different sensors and and this uh, great capability of of producing them with the highest quality. And so, Sony depth sensing solutions is involved in in uh, designing, 
some of those sensors, but also is involved in uh, adding the system and software layer on top of that to enable our, our partners and customers to make the best out of those sensors. So the future of Sony Depth Sensing Solutions is exactly focused on all the applications we've talked about and helping our partners and customers uh, uh, see them successfully and, and create good business for them uh, in the market. That's, that's what we're trying to achieve. And obviously, our, our motto is uh, make devices smarter and improve everybody's life. So our ultimate goal is, is to see um, with the rest of the ecosystem how we can make those depth, depth sensing technologies and sensing technologies improve everybody's life today. That's uh, where we're headed. You said the most important thing there, which the Sony brand stands for, is high quality. The Sony brand stands for high quality. When you buy a Sony product, going back to when I had my first Walkman, and then I, I had the, the, my first Sony, the red one, then the yellow one, it was all high quality, and that goes throughout the entire organization, no matter what division you're in at Sony. And Daniel, as we look to wrap up this insightful conversation, what would you like our listeners to take away with them today? I, I hope they, they got a bit of a feel that um, all these sensing and depth sensing technologies will really enable a lot of good new uh, use cases and applications in the future. That uh, depth sensing will enable uh, devices to be smarter and, and, and that it will improve a lot of aspects in our lives. And this in multiple categories like automotive, in the home, consumer, uh, way too much to talk about uh, the robotics, uh, etc. So this is just on the way and uh, the, uh, our listeners, your listeners, Grayson, should be, um, uh, should be aware that there is a lot of good stuff coming. There's a lot of good stuff coming. There's high quality stuff coming from Sony. Depth sensing is the future. Today is tomorrow, tomorrow is today, and the future is depth sensing. Daniel, thank you so much for coming on SAE Tomorrow Today. And pl the pleasure was mine. Thank you very much, Grayson. Thank you for listening to SAE Tomorrow Today. If you've enjoyed this episode and would like to hear more, please kindly rate, review, and let us know what topics you'd like for us to explore next. Be sure to join us next week when we speak with Tim Zercher from Torque Robotics. He'll discuss how Torque is developing autonomy for L4 trucking. SAE International makes no representations as to the accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. The information and opinions are for general information only. SAE International does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast.